for Camo. I um, work in the e-learning support services office at the library here at AU. And um, our office does a lot of different things. Um, we do Canvas support. We do a little bit of kind of course design and build support for how to put your content into Canvas efficiently. And we also provide um, training and technical support for a couple different Canvas tools, um, or excuse me, third-party tools that integrate with Canvas. And Kaltura is one of those. So we're going to talk today about how to create your own videos for your courses with a tool that we have that's fully integrated with um, with Canvas. Okay, um, so Today we're going to talk a little bit to start with why you might want to use videos in the first place, how they can be used in your classroom, um, and why that can be a good idea. Um, we are going to talk about different ways that you can incorporate those videos, and then we're going to do a Kaltura demo through Canvas, and then we're going to have hopefully a little bit of time at the end for questions and things like that. So when you think about um, videos and trying to create a video or edit a video, you might think of something very complicated um, like this. But I'm here to tell you today, it doesn't have to be like this. The Kaltura tool that we have to um, show you today is a lot simpler and a lot more user friendly than this. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is a little bit about why you might want to use videos at all. Um, so I have a question for you just to get started to try to think about it yourself. So if you could put in the chat um, an answer to this question, why might we want to use videos in our classes in the first place? Probably you already know some, especially now that we have lived through, um, you know, the kind of shifting all of our classes online and that kind of thing. So let's see, we got some things coming in here. Thanks, Shed, getting us started. So mixing up the modality of the class. Good. Um, Brett says it can be more engaging than text, and that is certainly true, especially for um, different Learners, um, you know, we don't talk about learning styles, but people still have preferences of how they like to um, absorb information. I had a meetings uh, recently with somebody who said they almost never read any text, whereas I prefer reading text versus watching a video. So everybody's a little bit different what they like. Um, so Robin said it's great to use videos for demonstrations. That is a fantastic way to use a video if you need to show somebody how to do something. Um, and Iga said that as well, kind of showing a demo of how to do something um, that students might not otherwise know how to do. And Yui says we live in a visually literate world and students respond well to all kinds of different materials. So written, visual, audio, all of that kinds of things mixed together. Great. Thank you all. Okay, so this slide here kind of sums up all of the things that you all already talked about in the chat. So, um, you know, the videos, um, when you kind of incorporate videos in the mix with what you usually do, um, you can kind of um, touch on people's different preferences for how they like to gain information and learn new things. Um, it can also make your um, materials more interesting, more engaging. We had that option in the chat. And then in the middle here, we've got a little bit about um, it can make your classes a little more personable. Um, especially for fully online classes, using video can be a great way to kind of introduce yourself as a real human um, to your students rather than some kind of ambiguous person on the other side of the screen. Um, so thinking about why you might want to use um, Kaltura specifically. Um, there are a number of different reasons why we offer this tool to you here at AU. Um, the first being that it's very easy to use. The interface is really user friendly. Um, as you'll see once we get going with the demo portion of this, um, it's really just a couple buttons and a couple little features that you might want to tailor for your particular video and then you're good to go. 
it is free for you to use um, because we have purchased an institutional license for it. So you don't have to buy your own equipment or own um, software, I suppose, to make a video. It's always available. Um, and it is integrated directly with Canvas. So this is really nice um, in a couple different ways, but one of them being that um, it's stored on Kaltura servers, all of your videos, so that maybe your computer breaks someday, or, you know, my husband just had his computer screen completely die, so he can't really effectively use his, his laptop anymore, even though it works. Um, you know, so you have these different kinds of things that can happen with tech, um, and you don't have to worry about all of your video files being lost if they are stored through Kaltura. Um, also a nice thing, the integration with Canvas allows you to add a bunch of videos to your Canvas class without actually hitting that file size um, cap that we have. So every class has a certain amount of storage space for files. And if you're uploading a bunch of videos, you're going to hit that cap very quickly. But if you're using videos from Kaltura that just kind of get uh, embedded into your Canvas course, you're not going to hit that file cap as fast. Uh, we also provide support for you. Um, if you ever have a problem with Kaltura or a question, um, you can email our eLearning Support Services team and we will help you uh, figure out how to use Kaltura better. And then the fun thing about Kaltura is that students can use it too. So anything you can do with Kaltura, they can do also. They have access to it just the same way that you do. So you can tap into this tool to add a little bit more creativity to your students' assignments and projects or even discussions, which we um, can get to in a couple minutes. All right, so thinking about different ways to incorporate videos. So we did a little of the why, but now let's try to think about the how. So if you currently use any video content in your courses, um, if you could put in the chat some examples of how do you typically do that? Is it for homework? Is it for assignments? Is it for grading? Um, you know, how do you typically use videos if you do it already? So an example of a way I like to use video in a, um, a Canvas class is providing a quick little tutorial of this is my Canvas course, this is how you navigate things, this is how you find everywhere, you know, all of the different components of the class that you might need to find. All right, great, we got some coming through here. Somebody said guest speakers, case studies, student created presentations, good. All of these things can be done really well with um, videos. Okay, video demos integrated into lecture slides, good. We've got an example of demonstrating a concept taking place in the world, perfect. And Brett says she uh, uses recorded videos that are incorporated into the slides, perfect, great. All right, these are all good ways to use videos. I've got a couple more ideas for you here on this slide as well. Um, so you can use videos to um, introduce students to your course, um, like any kind of introduction actually. It doesn't just have to be to the course um, itself. So you could do a course overview video, but you could do a course navigation video like I mentioned. You could also do a video introducing yourself. So instead of that typical page in Canvas where you've got sort of your contact information and a little bit about yourself, you could make that a video. Um, so you can just do a quick webcam shot talking to your students about who you are, why you're teaching this class, and, and what your hopes for the class are. Um, you can use it for communication. Making little video announcements is a great way to add personality to your course. Um, so instead of um, typing out whatever your message is, you can make a quick little video um, and share information that way. Um, we had a couple folks in the chat talk about how they use videos for lectures. Um, so this is a really nice way where you can kind of make a video that students interact with outside of class for the lecture portion of the class. And then in class, you can, you know, do a lot more of those sort of um, active learning activities, interpersonal communication and collaboration type activities. Um, for uh, assignments is another option. I've got discussions and assignments right next to each other here. Um, this is a great way where you can either give a video as some sort of prompt. 
Um, so in a discussion board, maybe it's the video prompt in an assignment, maybe you're doing a quick video explaining all of the details of the assignment to them. Um, or students can create their own videos with Kaltura as the response to whatever the assignment may be. Um, so they can kind of have an alternative um, way to submit their work or ev maybe everybody does the same thing and everybody's going to do a video. Um, and then it, it can be also a nice way to give feedback to your students um, while you're grading. Uh, I know that Canvas has a built-in video feature that you can use. Um, you could use that or you could use Kaltura and um, share kind of your feedback with a student in a way that can be a little bit more personable and a little bit more clear on the tone of your communication. So I know a lot of folks get concerned about giving feedback on an assignment and how that tone of what they write might be perceived on the other end of the screen. Okay, some quick tips before we get into our um, kind of the, the bulk of the presentation is going to be our Kaltura demo. Um, some advice is to keep it short. Um, so I think that the stat that gets thrown around, or at least the one that used to get thrown around, it might have changed, is that the uh, adult attention span is only about seven minutes long. Um, so you want to keep your videos short. If you have a longer lecture video that you would like to share with students that they are going to do outside of class time, um, a nice idea is to break it up into smaller components. So maybe you're lecturing about um, I don't know, the history of the Berlin Wall, um, and you want to break it up, you could do little chunks of, you know, this portion of a time period, this portion of a time period, and then students can kind of take each video as it comes. Um, a good idea, too, um, in Canvas, when you have a video, is to label it with um, details like how long is this video, what's the name, what's the content, what's it going to be like. Um, and you want to try to make it accessible, avoid um, odd color combos, we can call them, like you don't want to necessarily put pink and yellow together or these kind of clashing hard to read things that also goes for maybe a very light color, like a light blue on white background. It's going to be hard for a lot of folks to read. Um, and then you want to make sure your videos are captioned. But one of the great things about Kaltura is that they are auto captioned by a computer. So that's not actually something that you have to go out of your way to do um, to make sure that your video is accessible to your learners. All right, so we are going to take a look um, at Kaltura in Canvas. The essential process of creating a video um, with Kaltura is the first step we're going to do is download the software if you don't have it downloaded already. We are going to record our videos and then we're going to deploy the videos. The deploying part is basically putting them somewhere in Canvas where your students can see. Um, if you would like to follow along as I do the demo portion, we have um, some instructions here. So you're going to log into Canvas first. And then what you want to do is click into any course. It really doesn't matter. Um, you know, you might want to do the course that you're teaching for fall, but actually that My Media link that is in any Canvas course takes you to the same My Media page. So I'm going to do that real quick. I am already logged into um, Canvas. I've got my dashboard here. I'm going to go into one of my courses here from the dashboard and find the My Media link on the left hand side. So by default, it should be visible for every course. Um, if you are not seeing it, it is possible that maybe um, you hit it somehow, or it is possible that um, maybe you imported content from a previous semester that didn't have that link there. If you don't see the link, you can go into settings and navigation, and you can enable the, the link. So if it's down here and it says it's disabled, you can either click and drag it up or you can click the three dots and enable it. Okay, so I'm in my course. I'm going to click on my media from the left hand navigation menu, and this takes you to the my media page. So a quick note about my media is that every single person's my media page takes them to their own account. Um, so you, it's not enough to just record videos and have them stored in my media and expect your students to be able to see them just because the link is available. 
when students click on My Media, they're going to be taken to their own My Media account as well. So just something to remember as you start um, creating videos. Um, but um, yeah, the you'll have to do that third step that was on the slide, the deployment part. So we had a question in the chat about the student view. Um, the student view for um, Kaltura looks exactly the same as the instructor view. So students will do the same thing. If you're trying to leave them instructions on how to um, work with Kaltura, they're gonna go into your course, they're gonna click on My Media, and their page looks just the same. I don't think I can actually do it in uh, Canvas's student view because this test student doesn't have an associated Kaltura account, but let's see what happens. Yeah, so I can try, see what happens. Okay, there is something in here. So um, yeah, so you can see here, this is the student view of Canvas. It looks exactly the same. Once I leave student view, it looks just the same as what you'll see. All right, so some features here on the My Media page. Um, all of the videos that you will have once you start creating them are in chronological order, um, but you can change that uh, sort. So the default is that they're in chronological order, um, but you can change them by maybe the date they were updated. You can have them alphabetically. You can um, organize them by how often somebody has played them, all of these different kind of sorting options. And that right is right here at the top. You can also filter um, what you see here on the My Media page. So you can choose what media type, you can choose whether they were private or shared with someone, um, and you can choose whether they are your own videos or ones that other people have shared, that kind of thing. So there are some filtering options in this filters button right here, in addition to the sorting. You can also just search. So there is a search bar here for your My Media um, page. So if I wanted to find a video about digital scholarship, for example, I can search for that and I'll get a couple of videos kind of narrowed down to what I'm looking for. Um, so the most important button that you will need to know about in order to create new videos is this blue add new button. If I click on that, I get four different options and I'm going to go through each of these. So the first is a media upload. This is something that you can use if you maybe already have video files on your computer that you would like to load into Kaltura for use in Canvas. Um, so you might want to do that if you are finding that you are often hitting your file limit in a Canvas course when you're trying to upload real video files. You might want to do that if you want uh, captioning for all of your videos because you can load them up into Kaltura and then they're auto captioned and you're good to go as far as accessibility goes. Um, so that's a one or two ways or two reasons why you might want to use that media upload feature. Express capture is just a quick webcam video. All it'll turn on is your webcam and your mic and you just talk and create a quick video and that's it. Um, Kaltura Capture is the kind of full product option. Um, so if you wanted to create different kinds of combinations of video, maybe you just want audio only, maybe you want a screen capture, maybe you want um, you know, a, a webcam and a screen capture, you know, whatever kind of combo you want, the Kaltura Capture option is the one that's going to be for you. And then the video quiz is a way to make quizzes out of the videos that you have created already in Kaltura. So we're going to go through each of these. Does anybody have any questions so far about how to find my media um, or kind of the, the quick little features I've shown you on this page so far? Okay, great. I'm going to go ahead and uh, dive in. So I'm going to start with the media upload, which is our first option. So what you can do here is you can drag and drop a file into this kind of dotted box, or you can click on choose a file to upload and it will, let's see, oh, I do have a sample. Okay, um, it'll just open up this computer kind of finder, file finder thing. You find your file, 
and it'll upload it here. You get a quick progress bar that shows you um, that it's being uploaded into Kaltura, and then we get a message that it says complete, that's in green. So we can um, change the um, video name. By default, it's just gonna use whatever it was called when it was on your hard drive. You can add a description, you can add some tags. The tags are just sort of descriptors um, uh, about the topic of the video. Some people add tags that are for a specific course. So maybe you're teaching four courses and you're going to be making a bunch of videos for each of them. You could add a tag that is your course code. So then you can search for that tag um, yourself when you're in your My Media area. Um, you don't have to worry too much about private or published. Um, that is a feature that kind of tags in or aligns with um, the Kaltura Media Center, um, which we're not really going to cover today. Um, if you leave something as private um, and then you go and embed it in a Canvas course, your students will still be able to see it. So I wouldn't worry too much about whether your video is a private or published or any of that kind of thing. Um, you can just uh, leave it as the default. So I'm going to click on save. My changes have been saved. And if you have a bunch to do, it'll just keep opening up another kind of upload area below each video that you do. So you don't necessarily have to go back and click media upload again. You can kind of just stay on this page and keep uploading all of the different videos that you want to throw in. So that's the media upload. Again, that tool is um, used for video files that you have stored on your device already and you want to upload them into the Kaltura storage area, which is this My Media area to use in Canvas. I'm going to click on My Media link again to get back to this main page. Um, and we can see here this video that I just uploaded, the sample is right here and ready to go. Next, I'll try and express capture. I think it's not going to let me use this properly because, yeah, because Zoom is using my video. Let me see if I turn off on Zoom if I can. There we go. Okay, so you can't use uh, the Zoom. Zoom can't use the camera and Kaltura can't use the camera at the same time. Um, so I had to turn off the Zoom camera to get this to load. This is what the Kaltura Express Capture does. You can see that you basically don't have a lot to work with here. Um, it started my webcam. I can turn off the webcam if I wanted, and I can turn off the audio if I wanted. I can kind of toggle those on and off here. If I have different imports also, I can choose what those, uh, what those are gonna be. So if I have, like here at, the computer thinks I have four different microphones plugged in currently. Um, I can choose whichever one is the right one that I want to use. But essentially, you don't have a lot of creativity here. It's just meant to do a quick webcam video. When I'm ready to start, I can click the start button. It'll count me down. All right, here we go. Making um, a little demo video with Express Capture. And then I click stop when I'm done. And that's it. I can review it. I can click record again. That'll kind of trash this version of it and um, start fresh. I can download a copy if I wanted to. And uh, if I think it's good, I'll just say use this. It's going to give me kind of a title that is just the date, essentially. Um, I would recommend changing it from that because after a while, you're not necessarily going to remember what day you've recorded a certain video on. So I have something that's a little bit more descriptive of what this video is about, and then I'll save it. All right, and there is that video ready to go as well. Um, some of the videos, like these are coming up very quickly in my storage area, in my media. Um, if you make a long video, it's not going to be as fast. So please don't panic if you don't see it popping up right away here in my media. We have had some folks who kind of call us or even they'll run over to our office and say, okay, this video that I made, it's an hour long. It's not here yet. Um, but really, they just need to wait a little longer. Um, so... Yeah, any questions about media upload or express capture? They're pretty simple. They're pretty self-explanatory. 
All right, I don't see anything new in the, oh wait, here we go. Yeah, so um, Catherine asked how you would demo showing a website, like doing a screen capture style video. I can definitely show that. That's gonna be the next tool, this Kaltura Capture. Um, so if I click on that, what it is going to do is ask me, I'm going to click cancel just for now, what it's going to do is ask me to download the Kaltura Capture Desktop Recorder. So you do need to have this um, installed on your computer in order to successfully use Kaltura. You have a link down here for Windows or for Mac, so you're going to click on whichever one is relevant to your system. Okay, so I'm going to go redo those steps to try to load this through again. Add new, Kaltura Capture. So I already have it downloaded, so I don't need to download it again. What I'm getting here from Chrome is a little pop-up that says, do you want to open Kaltura? And yes, I do. So I'm going to click open. So after you've successfully downloaded Kaltura Capture, um, the next time you come through Canvas, go to My Media and click that Add New button. Um, it should give you some kind of indication that it, you are already you already have it installed and you just want to open it up this time. Okay, so this is it. This is what the little Kaltura screen uh, desktop recorder looks like. You have essentially four buttons and then there's a little tiny link over here that says manage. So as you can see, very user friendly, um, pretty simple um, to decide what it is that you want to use and do with this. So if you are interested in creating screen capture videos, um, like Catherine uh, mentioned in the chat, so this could be something like to demo a website, to demo a piece of software. Um, this could be something like um, doing a voiceover PowerPoint kind of thing if you want to use Kaltura instead of the PowerPoint feature. Um, you know, any of those kind of lecture things. Um, this is the tool that you'll need. You'll need Kaltura Capture. And then you have uh, three options here. You can toggle on and off any of these. If it is blue, it is turned on. And if it is gray with a slash, that means it's turned off. So you can customize this however you want. For a screen capture, we're going to choose screen. You can see a little preview of what it's going to record, which right now is my whole screen. If I want to turn on the camera, I can do that. You can see a preview here. and as with any of these, um, you can also kind of choose what the input is going to be. My laptop only has one monitor, so I can't choose. But if you had duplicate uh, monitors or double or triple, whatever, you could pick which one you want to record. Um, if you have other webcams plugged in, you can choose here which one you want to try. And then with audio, it'll let you do the same thing where you get to kind of pick what um, version of the microphone that you want to use. I would recommend um, if you want to create videos with Kaltura Capture, I would choose no more than two of these options at one time. Um, so I would pick screen and audio or camera and audio. Um, having the screen capture going on and the, your webcam and the audio is splitting your students attention in three different ways. So they're going to be trying to focus on what's on the screen. They're going to be trying to focus on your face as you're talking to them through the webcam. And they're going to be trying to listen to what you're saying. So it's a good idea to only pick two of these options at any one time um, so that um, you know, you're not necessarily trying to like split everybody's attention and, and get them so they're not fully focusing on any one thing at one time. You can also, if you're interested in doing screen captures, um, turn the audio off. I have done a number of little um, Kaltura videos in Canvas showing people how to do things um, where I just leave the audio off and it's just a purely visual thing. So let's do a quick um, screen capture video. I'm going to turn off the camera and leave on the other two, so screen and audio. I can pop into the manage area real quick and kind of show you what's going on in here. Um, the first is your library. This is previous videos you've made, but the settings might be interesting to you before you create your first video because you can set the quality settings in here. Um, you can set a recording name prefix to your preferences. Um, you can choose whether you want to highlight the cursor as you're kind of moving around. 
um, which is a good idea, especially if you're going to make a video with no audio in it. Um, and you can auto minimize when recording. I'm actually going to turn that on because that's not something I usually use, but I want to happen. So you can kind of go in here into this manage area, click the settings cogwheel on the left and kind of set how you want your video to, um, to be before you start. And again, that was this small, it's kind of hard to see, but it was this small little link right here, manage. Okay, any questions about how to kind of navigate your way around this little um, device, this little interface here? Okay, cool. I'm going to go ahead and start my video then. So um, my fourth button over here on the far left is my start button. I'm going to click on that. It'll count me down again. And once that little bar in the corner disappears, now that I turned that feature on, now I know I'm live. Um, I'm working on a PC down here in the bar. I've got my Kaltura icon with a little red dot. So hopefully you can see that okay in Zoom. Um, it's kind of on the edge of my screen, but that little dot next to the Kaltura icon means that I'm live, I'm going, I'm recording. So to make my screen capture from here, I'm just gonna click around on the whatever website or software program that I'm trying to show just as normal. So I can click through the website, do all kinds of different things with it um, and show the students whatever it is that I need to show. And I don't know if you can see this very well, but every time I click somewhere, there's gonna be a little yellow kind of highlight showing that somewhere is where I've clicked on. Kind of just helping students um, see, you know, how you're getting from point A to point B. And when I'm ready to stop, I'm gonna open up that little sidebar over here. And then I've got a couple options here. So the X is to cancel the recording. So say I'm going through, I'm doing my recording and I completely mess up and I'm frustrated and I just wanna trash this one and start over. That is an option. Um, you can just click on that X, it'll wipe out this whole thing. It'll be like it never happened and you can start over. If something happens that I just need to pause for a second, maybe I'm going through um, and trying to show my demo of my um, website or database or whatever it is that I'm doing, and I kind of forgot how to do something really quickly, I can go here, I can pause the video, I can figure out what it is I want to show next, and then I can click the record button again to resume. So that's an option there. And then um, I can also stop. So when I'm finished and I like my video and I'm ready to stop it, I'm going to click on this regular old stop button. It's going to ask me if I'm sure. I say yes. And then a new window will pop up. It asks me to um, name my video something. I can put in a description, I can put in tags, just like I showed you on that media upload page. So it's kind of same general idea here. And then the crucial piece is here that I want to click on save and upload. The save and upload button will help this video get uploaded to the Kaltura server, and then it'll be stored in my My Media area in Canvas. If I just click regular save, it won't get into the Canvas. So that kind of crucial piece, Really, the whole point of why we're using Kaltura um, is to get it into Canvas. That's going to be missing. So always make sure you click on that Save and Upload button. And then usually, yeah, it'll give me a little progress bar here, shows that it's uploading. And then usually I'll get a little pop up in the upper right hand corner that tells me when it's done. All right, there we go. So from this page, there's a couple of different things I can do. I can just click X. I can click new recording. Pretty sure either one. Um, okay, well, the X will close out Kaltura and the new recording will take you to that same little, um, the little recorder thing to make a new video. Okay, so that video I saved and uploaded, so it should be in my media. It might not be there yet. Okay, it is here. 
If I click on it, though, it probably is going to tell me, yeah, it's not quite ready. So I can't go back and watch it yet um, to make sure I like it, but it is being uploaded and, and processed by Kaltura. Let me see in the chat. Okay, so there is no um, way with the Kaltura editor to add in uh, title slides. Um, unfortunately, but if you were doing um, some kind of trying to think how you could do this in a kind of a workaround, you could maybe have a slide that you show before you kind of jump in um, to the, the, you know, screen capture, whatever you're going to try to show. But yeah, unfortunately, the very old version of Kaltura maybe five, six years ago, you could add those title pages in, but for whatever reason, they got rid of that in the editing process now. Any other questions about Kaltura Capture? Okay. Um, before I get into the video quiz, I'm actually going to go through um, some of the options that you have for editing your video once it's finished. Um, so, you know, a lot of people get nervous trying to make a video, especially if they're not used to doing it. Um, and maybe there's a piece in the middle where you flubbed a line or maybe you want to cut off the beginning and the end pieces where you're trying to get yourself sorted and start the video. All of that is possible with the Kaltura editor. So I'm going to go into that real quick. I'm going to use one of the older videos that I had here. Um, so for any of these videos, as you're kind of scrolling down your page, once you start recording some. OK, real quick, we got a question in the chat. If you wanted to record a PowerPoint presentation lecture, would this be more effective than recording via Zoom? Um, it's not necessarily more effective. Um, it is. I would say made, it, you know, Kaltura is designed to make a video. Um, Zoom is designed for a meeting. Um, so there are a couple odd things that happen when you record yourself in a meeting um, with Zoom that don't happen with Kaltura. Um, sometimes in Zoom, when you make a recording, there's a couple different, <coughs> excuse me, extra things around the edges of the video that wouldn't normally be there. Um, so in Kaltura, when you use Kaltura to make a video, um, it's basically just showing what you intend it to show. So I wouldn't necessarily say um, it's more effective, but I would say that it's a little bit more suited to the task at hand. Incidentally, if you do record yourself um, in Zoom and save it to the cloud, it automatically gets sent to Kaltura without you having to do anything. Um, so we started that during, um, you know, 2020, um, when people were recording a lot of their Zoom classes. We have this integration that it goes automatically into Kaltura. So if the first time you click into Kaltura, this My Media area, you maybe never have used this ever, but you might see videos in there of old Zoom recordings. Um, okay, so for any of my videos here in My Media, I have a couple little icons next to each one. So the first one shows you analytics. If you click on that, it's going to tell you like how many watches you've had on this video, um, you know, how many unique viewers, how long they typically viewed, how many people actually finished the video, all that kind of thing. So that's kind of a handy thing that people might like to see. Let me get actually back to the main page here. So you would find that by clicking on the little chart that's listed next to any of your videos. Um, to edit them, which is what we're going to get into next, is uh, clicking on the little pencil and you can click on the trash can to delete it. So maybe you made a video and it's just not really serving you anymore. You don't need it. You can delete it. But I'm going to click on the pencil to start editing my video. There's a bunch of different tabs here. What most people are interested in when they come in to vid, uh, edit one of their videos is renaming it, which we can do right here from the details tab that opened up, and editing the captions. So if I click on this captions tab about halfway across the page, I can click on the edit captions button, this blue button right here. 
and it'll take me to the Kaltura captions editor. It looks a little overwhelming, but essentially all you really need to do is click in one of these boxes and make an edit. So the auto captioner that comes with Kaltura is fairly accurate. Um, for most uh, native English speakers, it's going to be the most accurate. So unfortunately, um, for folks who are non-native speakers of English, sometimes it's a little bit less accurate. Um, so if you are a non-native speaker, it, you might be more inclined to come into this uh, caption editor and just make sure everything looks okay. If you are giving a lecture, um, no matter what your native language is, if you're giving a lecture that has a lot of names in it, um, I have found that the um, Kaltura captioner isn't the best with names, especially like my last name, Rakamo, it will never, ever know what that actually is. <laughs> um, so I often, um, if I have some kind of video that I've made where I'm dropping a lot of different names of places or people or whatever, I just come in and do a quick scan just to make sure that um, all of those are kind of accurate and it's not telling my students that it's named something silly. Um, but again, you know, pretty easy. You just click in here and fix the error. You can fiddle with the timing, but I wouldn't really advise you to do so for this for the average person making a normal kind of um, instructional video. You're probably not going to need to fiddle with the timing um, stamps over here. You can, but that's going to get you like way more down in the weeds. You're going to spend a lot more time doing your editing versus just kind of staying over here where the text is and making sure all of that is accurate. And I think, let me see. So if I had made any changes, the save button is over here on the right hand side that will turn blue if I am able to save something. I guess I could just go in here and like add a space. There we go. So here you see now it's turned to blue and I can save it. Um, you also have the option as you're going through and editing the captions, you can play the video and listen to it. You know, if you're not sure exactly what you said at, you know, minute one of your video, um, you can play and kind of listen to it and type as you go. Okay, so to get back then, the only frustrating thing um, about using the My Media area in Canvas is sometimes you just have to keep clicking back and going back to the main page because their back buttons aren't always very visible or existent at all. <laughs> um, okay, so I clicked on the little pencil next to my video again to get in here. This hopefully looks familiar. This is where I can rename it. This is where the captions tab is. If I want to cut pieces of my video, um, I would use this launch editor button here. So here is where I can do things. Ay, ay, ay. Sorry, guys. I clicked into the wrong video. So this is an example of something I would cut if I was making my demo and it wasn't live. Okay, so we're in the correct video now and I'm going to click that launch editor button again. Perfect, this is what I wanted to see. Okay, so this is the editor in Kaltura. You can see it's fairly bare bones. The options that I have here for editing is I can split a piece of the video, I can set in, which is essentially you're going to um, chop a chunk of whatever comes before where your cursor is, and it'll set in the video to that point in time, or set out is basically you're going to chop off the end of something. So if I wanted to, for example, cut off the beginning of this video, so I hit record, it counted me down, but I wasn't quite ready, I didn't have my um, slides up or, you know, whatever it may be. I'm going to find that place in the video by clicking down in this uh, kind of timeline down here. I can also always play my video and find the exact part. You can see the cursor is moving as the video plays. Okay, so maybe I want to cut out this whole chunk here. So from the start all the way to here, that's where I'm going to use my set in button. Okay, you can see now this doesn't exist anymore. So that whole front 52 seconds got chopped. 
at the end, um, maybe I want to cut out all of what I said from here on till the end. I can use that set out button. And so that's going to chop off the end. If I wanted to cut out a piece in the middle, maybe I was talking and like my phone rang or my dog started barking or whatever it may be, then you're going to click a couple different things. So it's not quite as fast as that set in, set out button. But what you're going to do is you're going to find the piece where you want to start cutting it out. You're going to click that scissors to split. So now it has made a chunk of this first piece. I'm going to find wherever it is that I want to start again. And I'm going to click those scissors again. So now what it has done is it has made this little chunk of like the bad piece of the video that I want to get rid of. And I click delete. So that's how you'll take it out of the middle. So you'll click the split button, the scissors, twice around the piece that you want to take out and click delete. So it's a couple more steps than set in, set out, but it's essentially just as easy once you get the hang of it. Um, so I will say if you don't use Kaltura regularly and you come in here, you'll probably forget what all these buttons are. Um, you can just kind of play with them um, until I hit save. Um, nothing is happening here. So none of these changes are reflected in my video yet. There's also this undo button. So you can kind of, you know, test out the button, see if it's doing what you intend it to do. And if not, just click undo, or you can kind of back out and not save it. Um, so you don't have to worry too much about completely ruining your video. Um, but those are kind of the, the editing features here. Does anybody have any questions about how to cut different chunks of the video? Okay, I'm not going to save this because I actually do need this particular video, um, but if I wanted to save it um, and I had made changes, like let me just cut off the front again the save button will become um, available to me and I can click on save. It'll give you a little message that says it's saving and it, it does say you can just kind of leave this page. You don't really need to kind of hang around. All right. So I'm gonna um, show you next how to actually share these videos with your students and then at the end we'll go back and do a video quiz. Um, so I have made three videos today and I want to share them with my students. So again as I mentioned earlier it's not enough for them just to be here in my media because students are going to see their own video storage area when they click on my media even if they're in your course. You know for example I could go into one of your courses click on my media and it's still going to show me this page because this is my Kaltura account. So I have to put them somewhere in the course for my students to be able to see. The two main options that most people use is they will put them into pages and put the page into a module um, or they can use the media gallery. The difference in when you would want to use these, the media gallery is great if you just have a bunch of videos that you want to kind of show your students all at one time. Um, the media gallery is great. What the media gallery looks like, I'll click on it. This is also a default link in your courses. So unless it's been um, disabled, it should be there and visible. This is what it looks like. So there's not necessarily any instruction here for students on like when they need to watch these videos or which ones they need to watch. It's just sort of a collection or a gallery, if you will, of different videos that I have made in Kaltura. So if that sounds good to you, um, you can um, click on the media gallery and click on add media. It's going to pop up with my list of videos again, and I'm going to take my three videos that I made today, check the box next to them, and then click on publish. And so now they will be added to this media gallery. The media gallery Oh, here, they're right up at the top. Sorry, I was looking for them. Um, the media gallery is specific to cl your class. 
So while the My Media page looks the same no matter what course you're currently operating in in Canvas, this Media Gallery is specific to this class. So this is the Media Gallery for my Sandbox course. If I click on the Media Gallery link in a different course, I'm going to see a different set of videos. So you want to make sure um, if you're using the Media Gallery, you want to go in each class and publish the videos that you have to that particular Canvas course site. The other way that is a little bit more um, specific to share Kaltura videos is with the pages option. So I can go into my modules area in Canvas and I can add a new page to any of my modules. I'll click on create page to make a new one. I'll name my page something and add it here. I'm going to click on the title of it so that I can go in and edit. There's an edit button over here in the corner. And what I need here is this toolbar. So I have my text box with the toolbar up top and the little Kaltura icon here in Canvas looks kind of like the Walmart logo, but rainbow. So hopefully you guys, uh, you all can see it here. If I click on that, it's going to pop up with my, my media page with all of my videos. And all I have to do is click embed next to the ones that I want to put on this page. I can do one video on a page. I can do, I don't know, I've seen probably up to 20 videos on a page. I don't know that there's a limit. Okay, so now we can see my video is here. I will say this is something that we are trying to fix. Um, there were some changes made to the player in Kaltura and right now they are auto playing um, even though that feature is turned off. So um, someone here in the library is kind of working with Kaltura to try to figure out why that is happening to get it to stop. So hopefully soon um, that is no longer going to be a thing. But it is kind of a um, a frustrating thing that is happening with the Kaltura player right now. Um, but I've got my video embedded in here. I can click down here and click on, on the rainbow wheel to add another one. We'll do the express capture demo that I did. And basically you can do this as many times as you want or as many times as you need. And I'm going to click on save and publish to make sure that this page is published and visible for my students. So now students can come in here. Yeah, so we got to fix that um, problem, but we are working on it with the autoplay. But here, so this is another way that you might uh, want to share your Kaltura videos with your students. Um, using them on pages can be a little bit more targeted for the students because you can put them directly into whatever modules they need to be in. So if they need to see these Kaltura videos for week one, I can put them in module one. If they need to maybe come later in the semester, I can make that page in a different module. So that one, this way is nice um, if you have certain videos that you want students to watch at certain points of time. Um, so it's really nice and, and clear when they're supposed to be watching what videos. Any questions either on embedding a video in a page or um, using the media gallery? Yeah, so um, Matt asked, could you embed a video in a module overview? So yeah, I've got a sample page here that's module to, to overview. Um, if I edit that page, I can find that Kaltura button. So the really fun thing about this integration with Canvas is technically any place in Canvas where you see this toolbar, which is a lot of places in Canvas, um, you can add a video. So if I go to announcements, for example, make an announcement, I have this toolbar. So I can make a Kaltura video, make an announcement via video to my students, and embed that right here in my Canvas announcements feature. And then students will come in and they can see the video right here. Um, on your syllabus page, if I edit the syllabus page, 
um, I have, I have to click on the three bars here, or three dots here to see it, but I still have access to that rainbow wheel and I can embed videos here. Um, I can embed them in assignments, I can embed them in discussions. Um, and I think you can do it in quizzes with the new quizzes um, feature as well with the old or what they call it classic quizzes, you can embed videos in quiz question prompts as well. So basically, anywhere in Canvas where you get access to this toolbar is a place where a video can be embedded. Okay. I don't see any other questions in the chat about embedding videos. So I'm going to use the last couple minutes that we have to show you how to make a video quiz in Kaltura. So I'm going to go back to my media again. The thing with Canvas, or excuse me, with Kaltura quizzes is that the video has to exist first. So the first step, if you want to make a quiz that um, goes along with a Kaltura video, is you got to make that video. So for example, we can take any of these actually um, and make a quiz out of them. So what I accidentally clicked on before was this um, quiz version of this video. So you can see here, it just basically makes a duplicate um, that is this video with some quiz features added in. So we're going to start from scratch and make a new Kaltura video. Going to go back up to my add new button. Because my video has already been made, either with uh, upload, ca express capture, or Kaltura capture, I'm going to click now on video quiz. What it's going to ask you is which video do you want to make a quiz out of? And I'm going to choose this demo that I just made. I click the select button, and then it'll take me to the quiz maker. So this looks very similar to the editing page. Um, you have your video here, you can play it, you can listen along, find the exact location of where you want to put a quiz question. Okay, and you can see the captions here, they're already done. They tell you, I think 48 hours, um, but if you have a small video and if it's made in a not very popular time, um, your captions will be ready very fast. Okay, um, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to use the either the play feature or you can kind of click around down here in the, the um, kind of time area. You're going to find the place where you want to put a question and then click that blue add question button. So you have a few options here. You can do multiple choice question. You can do a true false. You can just make a kind of reflection point um, where you just kind of type something in for your students and ask them to reflect. It doesn't necessarily give them anything to do um, uh, in Canvas besides that reflection thing. Or you can do an open-ended question where students will type their answer to you. So those are the basic choices. You don't really have more than that. Um, but what this is basically designed for is giving students a little bit more engagement in the video. So if you have a, a slightly longer video, um, it might be good to use this quiz feature just to kind of make sure that they're still paying attention um, and make sure that they um, are kind of actively, you know, interacting with this video. I'm going to uh, pick multiple choice. So what I do is I add my question. You put the co correct answer there, and then you can add as many different um, distractors as you would like. And then whenever you're finished, you click save. It puts this little kind of cube icon um, there in the place where you had indicated you'd like to have a question. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to do a true or false. All right. For this one, um, I have to choose which is the correct answer. The default is that true is going to be the correct answer. But if I click over here, um, I can indicate that false is the correct answer for this particular question. And then I click Save. So that's a pretty simple um, one to make. And then the 
open-ended one is even simpler. You basically just type in the prompt and click save. So now we can see here I've got three different questions kind of indicated to me at different points in my video. And then I click on done when I'm finished. I can preview this to show you kind of what it's going to look like to students. So whenever you make a Kaltura quiz out of one of your Kaltura videos, it's going to give you this little intro slide. It basically says you're watching a video that has a quiz to go with it. Okay, and then you can see here, I have to turn the sound off. Um, so now you can see here, there are three little indicators along the, the timeline bar down here that um, show students when the quiz questions are gonna pop up. So let me skip ahead. Um, so this is what it looks like when the question comes up. It automatically does it at the uh, time that you indicated, and then students can select the correct answer. I'll skip to the next one. Students can select their answer. And then for the open-ended one, you'll see they get a little text box and they can um, type their answer here and save it. And then at the very end, it gives them another kind of slide that pops up here. They have time to go review their answers or they can just skip ahead and uh, click on submit. It'll tell them what they scored and they can go question by question to see what the correct answer is and what they answered. Yeah, so Brett, hopefully that uh, answered your question. It does pause, it gives them time. Um, I don't think there's any kind of timer on those question slides so they can take their time and um, you know give as much thought to it as they need to or want to. So once you create a quiz in Kaltura, let me see if I can go back. All right, anyway, um, once you create a quiz in Kaltura, it'll show up in your My Media area. I don't know, for whatever reason, it made me have two but now I have two of the same quiz, but you can see here what it has done is kind of made its own copy of um, the video that I had before. So this is the plain video. This right here is the quiz. It's indicated with the quiz uh, title there. Um, so what you can do with Kaltura quizzes is two different things. If you don't want them to be graded, you can embed them in a page and the process for that is going to be exactly the same thing as what I just showed you before. So we're going to find a page where we want to put our quiz. We're going to edit that page and we're going to look for that rainbow wheel. So now when my my media list of videos comes up, I have this quiz and I can embed that that way. So what this will do, it runs the same as the preview I just showed you. Students will click on it. They'll um, answer all of their different questions that pop up throughout the video. And then at the end, there's nothing really um, that happens, right? You don't get any kind of indication of what they scored. Um, it's essentially just for sort of um, participation purposes, for engagement purposes, and not for grading purposes. So that's one way you can use a Kaltura quiz. You are also able um, to create graded Kaltura quizzes. So if I go to assignments and I click on plus assignment on this blue button over here, I'm going to name it something I can put in a description or instructions you know this is basically the same as making any other canvas assignment but what is different is I'm going to where it says submission type I'm going to choose external tool and then I'm going to click on this find button to find 
my Kaltura video quiz. So I think I pick video submission. Oh no, excuse me. That was wrong. I'm going to click the the Kaltura video quiz. And here I get my my media page that pops up here and I click embed for the one that I want to choose. It's going to put a URL down there. You don't have to worry about that or fiddle with that. I'll click on select. And so now what this is going to do is it is going to pull that particular Kaltura quiz that I had made um, and students will be able to take it as a graded assignment. I'm going to show you that again, um, just because I clicked on the wrong one the first time. Um, so under submission type on my create a new assignment page, I'm going to choose external tool. And I'm going to click on find. And I'm going to find Kaltura video quiz is the one that I want. And then I pick my quiz. So once I save and publish my assignment so that students can see it, you'll see here I'm on an assignments page in Canvas. Um, I will, as a student, come through, do this video quiz. And then the nice thing is, is that it will create a corresponding column in my gradebook automatically. And it pulls the grades um, that Kaltura is going to give them automatically. Um, so this is especially nice um, if you have like little multiple choice questions or something that's easily gradable. I do think I noticed that when we did the preview, it gave the student 100% just for answering something at the open ended um, question. If that is fine with you, you know, if these are kind of low stakes little knowledge check things, um, then you can leave it that way. If um, you would rather not have that, you can do um, just multiple choice or true false true false questions where the um, kind of computer is going to be able to grade those for you. Okay, so that is kind of, that is everything that I had planned to show you today. We do have a little bit of time left until the end of our time together for any questions you may have. You can write them in the chat. You can go off mute, and I'm happy to show you anything if you need it uh, one more time. All right, um, I can stay until 4.45 and answer any questions that people may have, but I'm gonna put our um, contact information here in the chat for you. So this is the email for our Canvas support, but you can email uh, Kaltura questions to us um, via that email, or you can call 202-885-3904. Thank you. And then um, Vittoria from um, CTRL did put a um, evaluation survey link in the chat. I'll stop sharing too because I think she had a um, slide that had a QR code for the survey too on it. Okay, perfect. Thank you all for joining. You. I appreciate you being here.